guys and welcome back to Geeks War Gaming. You join us here for our latest 40k battle report. Today we are doing um, Tactical Escalation, so we're doing a Maelstrom game for the first time. We're using the Tactical Objective deck. So this is where you generate the amount of cards relating to the turn number you're on. And we're doing Spearhead Assault for the deployment. So we're only 18 inches apart, if we deploy that way, at the start of the battle. I'm taking my Orcs. And I'm bringing my Templars, so which means I love getting up close and personal, <laughs> and this is perfect for me. Yeah, so John's got his Black Templars, I'm taking my Orcs. I'm trying to find the love again for my Orcs, which is uh, missing at the moment in 8th edition. Um, so yeah, not sure how this is going to go, to be honest. Tactical Objective decks, they can throw in um, different things into the game. They can change the game around quite quickly as well. Mm. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what the new decks like and some of the new mission objectives we get from them. But yeah, it's uh, let's go try and find some love, some orcs, and let's go take a look at the armies. Here's the orcs using a spearhead detachment, HQ and warlord. I am taking Gaskell Thraken. His warlord trait today is tenacious survivor. Second HQ choice, I'm taking a big mech with a shock attack gun. Into troops, I'm taking a 20 boys squad. The knob has a power claw. Into elites, I'm taking a five knob squad in here. There is a power claw and two big choppers. I'm gonna try my commandos out. Not really use these in eighth edition, so it'll be interesting to see what these guys can do. Uh, dedicated transports, I'm taking a truck equipped with a big shooter. And now over to heavy support. I'm taking two battle wagons, both open topped, one with three big shooters on. I'm taking three killer cans, all equipped with the killer can claw and the shooters. And then finally, I'm taking a death dread, which has got the extra close combat arm and the rocket. So here's my Black Templars list. And what we've got for a warlord is my chaplain in Terminator armor. He's got the Warlord trait of Iron Resolve, so he's got plus one wound and he gets his wound back if he loses one on a roll of a six. I've also taken a Tech Marine with a Servo Harness and my Chaplain is going to run around with a Terminator Assault Squad in a Land Raider Crusader with a Multi Melter upgrade. And for my troops, I've got a Razorback with a squad of six, so filling that one out to capacity, a Crusader Squad, Sword Brother in there and I've got uh, a power sword embedded in there. And I've also got a flamer as a special weapon. And then my other crusader squad is an eight man squad with a sword brother in there and a power fist and a flamer in there. And that squad is going to be followed around by the tech marine. So the tech marine taking up two seats in that rhino because of his servo harness fills that rhino to capacity as well. And then in a fast attack, I've got my storm talon, which, um, I think that one is going to be in the sky on its own, all being well. So that hopefully will give me a bit of air supremacy. And then in the heavy support section, I've got my Trilaz Predator. I'm expecting battle wagons and I want something to punch through that higher toughness value. So I've gone for the Trilaz fit out on my Predator for this game. So deployment for the Black Templars, I've got my Razorback down here with the uh, squad of initiates in there and behind there I've got my uh, Predator and it's sitting there really as a reaction to the fact that uh, Rich has got all of his heavy armour just basically unsubtly driving down the centre of the board there so it is out in the open but it's pretty tough and hopefully won't take too much flack. Got my Land Raider Crusader also front and centre there with the Terminators on board as well. And then behind them we've got a Rhino with the other Initiate Squad. That one's got the uh, Tech Marine in there as well. Uh, it's not a lot for your points. Is of course the Storm Talon is going to be coming in on reserve. Uh, for Rich's army then he's got some Commandos coming in on reserve. And then we've got the two Battle Wagons at the front here. The one's got 20 boys in it, the farthest one away. And then the nearer one to the camera's got Gaz and a squad of knobs in there. Um, We've got the Killer Can, we've got the Death Dreads, and we've got a truck with nothing in it, which I'm intrigued about. And then tucked away in the building up here, we've got uh, the Shock Attack Gun, which, uh, yeah, could probably lead to a bit of fun and games during the course of this battle. Um, but yeah, we'll see how that, uh, that plays out. So it is Orcs to go first, unless the Templars can seize, which they do not. 
So my tactical objective for this turn is King Slayer. So basically slay the opponent's Warlord. So that's not going to happen in turn one. Basically, everything is now on the move up the battlefield. The battle wagons have moved up there 12 inches. I've also advanced them as well. The one on the far side of the battlefield went up an extra six inches. This battle wagon only went up one inch. Uh, Jeff Jared, Killer Cans and the truck have all advanced as well. So they've all gone up. We are moving up the centre of the board in a big, green, angry wedge. There's smoke billowing everywhere across this battlefield. Now, the only thing that really is going to shoot this turn will be the mech with the shock attack gun. Not sure on targets. Not sure what he can see. That land raider is obviously a threat and a worry, so that might have to be priority number one. So the big mech with the shock attack gun, you have to roll a d6 to see how many shots you get, and I rolled a 2. So I've uh, spent a command point already, re-rolled that, and got a 3. So we have 3 shots. Now, the strength is 2d6. So what will the strength of this weapon be? It's 7. That's not too bad. So I've elected to shoot the big mech at the Predator all the way at the back of the battlefield. Having a 60-inch range is quite handy. Uh, however, I am an orc, so I need fives or sixes to hit. I get one hit. It's toughness seven versus strength seven, so I'm wounding on a four, which I do wound. So the best thing about the shock attack gun, it is minus five AP, and it does a D3 damage. It does two damage to the predator. Quite a nothing turn for the orcs there, but it's going to be. It's all about combat with this army, so... The battle wagons moving up the battlefield quite quickly is an advantage. I need to get the blob squad out. I need to get the knobs and gaz out and get them into combat. So my tactical objective for this turn is supremacy and I can score D3 victory points if I hold any three objective markers by the end of this turn. Not massively likely this early on in the game, unfortunately. The Razorback has driven around the side of the building. Um, looking to get a shot across the battlefield and uh, maybe next turn deploy some marines. Crusaders stayed put, just uh, wanting to maximise the firepower of that. Predator also stayed put. And my other rhino over the back there, you can see it's scooting around the building. Uh, there's an objective tucked around down there, so I'm going off in that direction. So not a massive amount of movement for the Templars in this turn. So extra bonus points for the Predator's uh, gunning skills in particular, hitting with all the LAS cannons on the uh, battle wagon just there, uh, which really uh, shook it up uh, badly and it was finally finished off by the Land Raider Crusader. Uh, so that was uh, that's first blood, which is cool. Unfortunately though, 20 boys inside is not a particularly nice prospect, but uh, the Storm Bolters from the Rhino that you can see through the building there Plus the Razorback have taken five off that number. So they're down to 15 boys in that squad. But they're probably still pretty angry about the fact they've just been blown out of their transport. So that's going to be interesting next turn. At the start of turn two, I've drawn my new tactical objective and it's a mission critical objective. I roll my D6 to see which of the six objective markers I need to hold. And it is number three. And number three is right by the space marine statue in the middle of the board so with all that in mind gaz and the knobs have gotten out of the battle wagon they're looking at charging into the razorback down here and destroying that ripping it apart the battle wagon has then moved up across holding on to objective three killer cans have come around as well they're going to shoot some rockets this turn truck has moved around death dread has moved around and the 15 very peed off boys have made their way across they're looking at going into the rhino as well so hopefully dead rhino hopefully dead razorback at the end of this turn maybe a dead predator as well because i'm going to fire the mech with the uh, shock attack gun at it again and probably the rockets from the killer cans one thing that i forgot to mention is the commandos are on they've come on jonathan's board edge here nine inches away and they've moved up their six so they're nicely within charge range now of that predator so if he doesn't die to shots the commandos will be going in as well so uh, yeah let's go put the hurt on these so again a little bit of an uneventful round of shooting we've done a couple of wounds to the razor back down here i think it was only one actually um and that was from gazzy's big shooters the shock attack gun 
right at the back of the battlefield, open up the Predator again, doing three damage. So that's down to six wounds. And everything else dinged and pinged off the halls, the rockets and the killer cans from the Death Dread, the bid shooters, the boys shooting, the knob shooting. No extra damage done at all. So we've got to take it into assault. So the knobs and Gaz both made it into combat with the Razorback, making really short work of it, to be honest, uh, destroying it quite easily. The squad has jumped out. Now I have consolidated into that squad. We think that's right. Comment below if we are wrong on that. Um, so John will get to hit with that squad, but not just yet, because the commandos and the predator down here made well the commander's made it in um lots of hits going in only managed to do three damage with the power claw so it's still alive with three wounds remaining next to swing is the orc boys onto the rhino here are john john's having to hold the camera because i've got 42 dice in my hand so the orcs get two attacks the standard plus one for the chopper and there's 14 of them so i've got 42 dice hitting on threes let's go work that out I've got 23 hits out of the 42. Now these guys are going to be wounding on fives and sixes. So 23 dice, five and sixes. There's a few in there. Nine wounds caused from the boys. So John's got nine three ups to make. Oh, there's a couple of wounds going through in there. So the Rhino took five wounds from the boys and then the uh, boss knob with the power claw hit it. Two wounds remaining. I did three damage from the power claw. Ouch, still alive, Predator's still alive. The Razorback has obviously gone. Now John's still got to hit me back with the Predator and then he's going to hit me with the Crusader squad that came out of the Razorback. In the return punches from the Black Templars, there was three of the knobs killed down here and one put on one wound. Got to do morale check over here. Predator and the Rhino failed to do any damage. So at the end of the Orcs turn two, it's a victory point scored, the Battle Wagon is holding on to objective three, which is what my mission critical objective was. So there's the first victory points for the Orcs. My new tactical objective is to secure objective number four, which is just behind the bunker right there. Uh, and that's kind of okay, I guess, because I've got a bit of a problem here with my Rhino. And what I've done in the movement phase is uh, limped the rhino the three inches that it's still capable of moving out of that combat um, before I did that I uh, chucked all the marines out and they've moved as far as I can for now although I'm going to run those in just a short while uh, the terminators have hopped out of their land raider crusader and are going to sort out those boys and uh, get some vengeance and wreck their world and then the uh, land raider has moved forward as far as it can uh, towards the battle wagon just there as you can see in the front of the shot here my storm talon is also on and getting involved that's going to get uh, that's going to get involved with those killer cans down there and sort those guys out all being well and uh, my a predator, I'm just going to have to let it suffer, I think. Um, yeah, I'm just going to have to let it suffer because if I back it away, it can't shoot. So I may as well have a go at doing something in combat. And these guys clearly stuck in combat. Uh, the guys down here, the Tet Marine got a, a, a brilliant little uh, uh, run roll. Uh, so he's actually within three inches of that objective, which is pretty cool because um, that's going to score me some victory points and that's always good the squad however uh, not feeling quite so athletic and are slightly left behind so the chaplain did not do a very good job with his storm bolter and uh, managed to miss uh, the uh, the boys there right in front of him but uh, we'll make short work of those in close combat just you wait so the crusader basically fired everything at the uh, death dread and uh, blew it up uh, took all of the wounds off that which is cool and another round of uh, excellent shooting from the newly entered storm talon as well which made uh, pretty light work of most of the killer cans there so there's one killer can left on just two wounds and the other two got wiped out so that's pretty cool they're obviously going to take a morale check as well which is uh, which is good and then down here in combat uh, the uh, Crusaders got there, used their bolt pistols, and uh, uh, well, I managed to score three wounds, and then Rich saved them all, so that's kind of annoying. 
So the Assault Terminator squad did did what they do best, I guess, and there were just seven models left by the time they'd uh, finished uh, dropping all their hits into that unit. They have subsequently failed their morale check sufficiently badly that the whole squad is wiped out. So that's good, but they're just in a bit of a silly position now, really. But it is what it is. I suppose I had to deal with those guys. I couldn't just... Uh, let that uh, combat roll and roll. Uh, speaking of combats that roll and roll, then nothing's happened down here. The the Predator managed to score one hit with its uh, one remaining attack, but uh, was then saved. And then uh, the Commandos couldn't hit it. So that <laughs> just basically just carried on as it was before. And over on the opposite side of the battlefield here with Gaz and the uh, the knobs, the, well, the knobs are dead. And Gaz has taken two wounds as a result of combat with the Black Templars. And they have lost uh, one of their uh, squad to that combat. Of course, these guys cannot fail their morale right now. So they're going to continue to fight on and hopefully continue to dash out a little bit of damage towards uh, Gaz there. And at the end of that turn, my Tech Marine is just within three inches of objective number four. So that's going to score me just one victory point. My two new objectives are Secure Objective 3 and Secure Objective 2. To objective 2 is right down here at the back of the battlefield. The uh, Big Mech has stepped down from that level, securing me Objective 2. Objective 3, now that's right here behind the Emperor, the one I had previously. The truck has moved up as well just to definitely make sure I get that secured. Uh, the one remaining killer can has moved up. He's going to shoot his rocket over there. And then I think he's going to probably join Gaz in assault down here. Uh, Commandos are still in combat with that Predator. Jonathan has just punched a massive great big hole in this Orc army. Losing that death row, two of my killer cans. That entire boys squad hurt and hurt quite a lot. So there is a big gaping hole in the Orcs warband that we need to fill and fill quickly. In the shooting phase, the big mech right at the back of the battlefield opened up with the tech priest down here. No damage done, nothing at all. In fact, nothing did any damage apart from the big shooter on the truck. A shot at the Land Raider taking off a wound. So happy days, that's a little bit of damage done down there. In assault, uh, the killer can made it into combat but wasn't really needed. He whiffed all of his rolls. Gaz then put the smack down and absolutely smashed the Crusader squad, the Sword Brethren, is still here at the moment. Uh, he attacked back, no damage done to Gaz. Commandos have finally seen off the threat that is the Predator. They've uh, The Power Claw guy smashed that in combat, so that's good as well. So at the end of the Orcs turn, we score two victory points. One for holding objective three, and one for holding objective two. So my objective that I've drawn for this turn is priority orders received and that's given me big game hunter. So I need to destroy something with my warlord and his unit that has 10 wounds or more. Now conveniently, the truck has 10 wounds. So what I've decided to do is keep the land raider still and use that to start putting some shots into the truck. I've moved my tech marine up to take some shots as well. And the game plan is to leave it with minimal wounds and then let the uh, chaplain charge. Now that is a 10 inch charge after he's moved, so he's moved around the building. But uh, being a Black Templar and all, I can re-roll that. So I'm going to give it a go and see if I can't pull off four victory points for just destroying a truck, which would be absolutely hilarious. Uh, in the background, a Crusader squad there. The other objective I've got in the pack still is to secure objective one, which is just there. So they're walking up and I'm going to run those. And the badly broken Rhino can only move three inches, but I've turned it around just to get the Storm Bolter's eyes on uh, the truck if I need to. So I'm going to have to pick my shooting order carefully to make sure I don't blow it up before I get the opportunity to charge it. Um, and, oh, the Storm Talon. The Storm Talon is still zooming along and I've moved it up here to have a go at um, the big mech and get rid of that shock attack gun. Did contemplate putting it into hover mode to try and grab objective number one, but uh, it's out of range. So 20 inches is just too short and it will be out of range. So I'm going to carry him on and uh, keep flying along. So my Crusaders managed to inch, well, two inch forward. So not exactly a run, more of a stagger towards that objective. So the trick in shooting was to tread the line carefully and soften up that truck enough that uh, the chaplain can go smash it up 
in combat but uh, not destroy it and I've trod that line very carefully and I fired the hurricane bolter on the left hand side and the assault cannons at it and then the other hurricane bolter and the multi melter I fired at the battle wagon and what I've got is a truck that's down to three wounds which is nice and squishy now and I've got a battle wagon that's lost two wounds and is down to 12. Um, so that's pretty good it's lined up quite nicely for assault as long as I can make the charge roll and I've got two goes to do that and I need to get more than 10 on 2d6 so it'll be interesting to see if we can get that well that's four victory points in a bag if I can pull that little stunt off and the only other bit of shooting that's happened is down here the storm talon has opened up at the big mech and he's down to one wound so you can line up all the plans you want and then the dice let you down unfortunately he failed his charge roll not just once but twice to get into that truck so that's going to have to wait for next turn now which is a little bit annoying um managed to get one hit in overwatch but uh, fortunately saved that so that was all good uh the other bit of combat to just down here uh, i completely forgot about my sword brother he should have fired his bolt pistol in combat but i completely forgot about him which is stupid i uh, decided to put my hits on the killer can and caused one wound uh, before he succumbed to a drill through the helmet which is quite unfortunate for my little sword brother so he is dead So my three new objectives this turn, I have Scour the Skies, Destroy an Enemy Flyer, Defend Objective 1, so I have to hold on to Objective 1 for two turns, and Assassinate, so kill an enemy character. So Scour the Skies, Big Mech hasn't moved, I'm going to attempt to fire the gun at this flyer, taking that out. It's not really going to work, but worth a try. Assassinate and Defend Objective 1 really are not going to work, so... Battle Wagon, the one remaining killer can and the Gaz are looking at the Land Raider, destroying that. And then finally, the Commandos have got back behind the building offering some cover because, let's face it, they might have to secure me Line Breaker at the end of this game. The Big Mech with the Shock Attack Gun shot at a Flyer. Doing two wounds. Not enough. Not enough. Missing quite a few dice. A, bit, a little bit annoying. Uh, shots rain down onto the Land Raider doing one wound. And then I took the Battle Wagon, the Killer Can, and Gaz himself into Assault. Whiffs from the Killer Can and the Battle Wagon did not help that situation. And only hit twice with Gaz taking off six wounds. So it's still alive with nine. Ah, <sighs> dear me. Never mind. That's no victory points scored this turn for the Orcs. My additional card for this turn is to secure Objective 2. That might actually work because Objective 2 is down here and is currently held by that uh, big mech. But uh, if I drop the Storm Talon into its kind of hover mode, then that's a possibility. So it's only got one wound left. I reckon I can take him out with that. Let's, uh, let's go for that. We might get a couple of victory points out of that maybe. Um, and what I want to do this turn ideally is get uh, the Crusader squad over to that objective and uh hopefully get the get the warlord to take out the truck for his priority order so uh yeah let's do some movement and uh let's start working towards those objectives so the crusader squad across the back have run towards objective number one and have secured that which is one of my tactical objectives so that's great uh, other bits of movement that have gone on the storm talent has um, gone into its hover mode and gone up to that objective just hopefully to uh, dispatch that big mech and claim that objective so there's another point hopefully and then across the battlefield uh, my land raider has backed out of combat withdrawn from combat it's uh, it's damaged but it's still got maximum movement so that's 10 inches and the Terminator Assault Squad are going to be walking around that building there with an eye to charging into Gaz and they'll still be hopefully in the sphere of influence of the chaplain so they'll get all the buffs associated with that which is great the chaplain himself is going to dispatch that truck i've minimized the charge distance and it will get wrecked this turn in the fight phase and my tech marine i've moved him back and put him on top of the bunker so that he's close enough to grab that objective and still fire at the um, battle wagon just here and the reason I've done that is one of my other tactical objectives is to hold three objectives and I reckon if everything goes off according to plan the tech marine is going to hold one the crusader squad is going to hold the other one and the storm talent is going to hold the third so I reckon I might be scoring that one too or being well uh, but it's of course all down to shooting and into the fight phase so let's see how the turn pans out but it's looking like everything is in a good place right now
Chaplin used his storm bolters to further soften up the truck so it's down to just a single wound now. The tech marine just above him shot over his head and has taken out the killer can that was next to Gaz. Only had one wound anyway so that went boom pretty easily. And then over here the storm talent, uh, the assault cannons were enough alone to take out the big mech. So that, uh, that guy's uh, off the board and that leaves that objective free. The crusader squad over there have got that objective in the bag. The only thing we need to worry about in the tactical cards of this uh, remainder of this turn is going to be the chaplain. He's got to charge in and then take that out in the fight phase. So I guess it was fairly inevitable really. The chaplain destroyed the truck and has uh, then consolidated up towards the battle wagon. Wasn't sure how it was going to go but uh, the assault terminators managed to take out Gaz and have also consolidated into that battle wagon as well and quite a successful turn when it comes to scoring some victory points as well so the chaplain received a priority order to destroy anything with a wound value of 10 or higher like that truck and that scored me d3 uh, uh, victory points and i got a three for that which is great and then one for the priority order itself and then i also had uh, a request to grab objective number one which that crusader squad has got and also to grab objective two, which the storm talent over there has got. So there's a victory point for each of those. And um, what I was also looking for was supremacy, which was to, uh, basically to hold on to three objectives. Unfortunately, the tech marine is not on the same level as his objective. And I should have thought that a little bit more carefully before I positioned him up there. But uh, never mind. In the grand scheme of things, scoring six victory points in a turn is not a bad thing. So at the end of turn four, that's it. That's game. It's seven victory points from the tactical objective deck and first blood for the black templars it gives them eight and the orcs are only on three and all the orcs have left is one battle wagon and one squad of commandos there is no way no way that i can pull a victory back from here because the cards are just not going to allow it so we've decided to call the game let's head over to the post game review So that was another tough game for the Orcs. Um, started out quite well, to be yeah. honest. I think about the first two turns, they got into combat quite quickly. They decided to try and smash face, which they did quite well. And then, was it your turn two? You destroyed two killer cans of Death Dread. Oh, that was brutal in, in, com in shooting. Cans. Shooting. Knobs mm. went, I think they went in assault, and just, just vile. It was just an absolute turn of kicking my butt across the board and after that there was just no way back no way back whatsoever um so yeah go on then john how did your black templars perform i guess i was quite lucky with this uh, mission on two counts one we were quite close to start with and of course templars desperately want to get into combat so that's so the walks for that man so the walks but that was helpful the other thing that was quite helpful is i, I did take a, a lot of vehicles uh, for transport and that obviously makes a mobile army which is quite handy I've got a flyer in there to do some cheeky object objective grabs as well. So I just happened to bring the right army for this mission just purely by luck. And I think that made a big difference. To be honest, I don't even know if it was a case of you brought the right army to the mission. I honestly honestly think, and I don't know what you guys out there think. It'd be interesting to know. Um, 8th edition was summed up as being balanced and probably the most balanced version of Warhammer 40,000. And I'm quite a few games in now. And I don't think it's balanced at all. <laughs> I'm not just saying that because I'm an orc player and I keep losing. Um, I just don't. I just I I enjoy it. I think it's a really really good fun game. I love filming it and I love getting the battle reports out there. And I love playing games that we don't film. Um, do I think it's balanced? No. Does it need to do certain things need to be nerfed? Yes. Um, do orcs need their own codex? Yes, desperately. Um, no, I've said might this, make a big difference. Yeah, I think it you would. Getting, you know, and it's like I took a twenty odd boy squad there for the first time. Normally they're in um, two separate twelves, so I combined them up and had them as one big blob, and you massacred them in one turn, pretty well, much. Well, it was the morale that let them down, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. morale morale is always going to hurt orcs when you drop below. When you when you're above um, a certain number, you can use well, you can use the amount of models in the unit right. for their leadership. This and when is you're mob, on mob rule. So when you're on 20, say, that's pretty good. Using the leadership of 20, it's like, yeah, I'm not going to break. And then when you start dropping down below 10, which is what happened to my squad, then they're on about seven left. 
then you start to lose them through leadership and uh, I, I, I don't know um, is the love for my Orcs back no not yet um, would I like to add some more stuff to my Orcs yes maybe not yet though um, I'm gonna wait I'm gonna wait and see what the codex brings hopefully next year um, Templars Templars are tough getting to re-roll their charge ranges I didn't think that was the best army trait to be honest with you I think it is but it's quite it has its advantages and I actually unfortunately fluffed a re-roll on one of the turns there but that's that's life I guess so I guess rolling 10 plus on a 2d6 is always going to be a challenge even if you get two goes at it but it's quite a handy thing to have it gives you that little bit of extra confidence to put a charge in because you're more likely to achieve yeah. it you've got two shots on it so yeah I, I quite like it actually I, it's not I'm, bad. I'm quite surprised about how tough your uh, terminators with lightning claws are as well they they do a hell of a lot of damage hell of a lot now i know i run frost claws with my wolfen in my space wolves and they're slightly different um but terminators with lightning claws it's i mean it's a chaplain uh, obviously the chaplain isn't in the unit anymore because that's not how it works but as long as you keep the chaplain somewhere close to them then they've got that extra advantage then of not just re-rolling the wounds but also re-rolling them obviously to hit on the first yeah. turn so that makes a big difference you're chucking down a lot of dice when you start doing that yeah you are and, I, and, and thinking about this now I think one of the issues that they need to sort out with 8th edition is cover I think how cover works needs to change maybe change back so if you've got a 20 if you've got a 20 boys squad and you are all in the building in the footprint of the building except for one guy you don't get a cover save now i don't know if that's been faq'd i need to have a proper read through it but that's how it currently sits in the rule but you don't get a cover save if there's one person standing outside the building they all need to be in the footprint of a building to get a cover save you try to try and get 20 or boys inside the footprint of a building it's not going to happen and there are six up save we need hard boys back um, so yeah, it was a different list I tried tonight. Killer cans are in um, a recent tournament, the Northwest Open. I faced an army that had 12, 12 killer cans in. Wow, they were they were tough, and they are tough. You know, they mm. do a lot of damage. Their weapon does minus five AP and does three damage flat. It, they're quite nasty. Um, but when you get two of them shot off the board in one turn, and they've got five wounds each as well, I'd like to add. When you put down ten wounds and take off two. What are you meant to do? What are you meant to do? You're left with one. Um, good dice rolling. It was just the Death Dread did nothing at all. That got popped quite quickly and quite easily. Um, Land Raiders. Land Raiders are tough. Mm. Apart from when I face you with your Tau and you destroy a Land Raider in one turn of shooting with Tau. Well, I was thinking about that when you're talking about balance, and I think Tau is probably one of those armies that has been nerfed a little bit. But I again, think that was quite an exceptional round of shooting. I think I think Tau have been, have been brought back down to earth a little bit. Mm. Um, I just don't think orcs have been pulled up enough in line with a lot of the other mm. armies out there right. that you can play. I'm kind of inclined to agree. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know. And orcs are meant orcs are meant to be fun. It doesn't matter if you lose games because you're an orc player and you love it and it's great fun. Uh, no, not happening for me at the moment. It really isn't. And I've got a chaos army. I've obviously got my space walls. I've got my ultramarines for thirty k and 40k and I'm working on them a bit more for 40k and I've got my orcs and my least favourite army at the moment is my orcs and that really pains me to say it because I love this army and I've had them for years and I absolutely love them um, but yeah so please go into workshop can I have a codex and can I please have Ard boys back <laughs> and can you make us a bit tougher and a bit harder please that would be lovely um, but yeah that was that was a good fun-ish game to play if you were John that was really good fun and if you were me yeah, you know what? There, is, there is no at the end there there is no pleasure in, in <laughs> you maybe you denied for the opportunity to table you but that's what would have happened there, I mean up until about turn two two and a half ish it was going all right but then it's just no, yeah I mean make, no fun when the commandos are in the, the commandos are at the back of the board hiding behind a building so they'd have, they'd have just got shot off by a land raider you might Batwagon had like 10 10 wounds left I think by the end of the game and the lightning claw terminators were just sliced it apart um, there was there was no way back. You you were so far ahead on um, on victory points, and the end of turn four, when you scored six, mm. that did it. So we were really close up to that point. Even though my army was really being thinned out, we're still really really close on victory points. And then that turn, you just went. Pshum, see ya, can't take, catch me. I'll take it all. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the Templars did what they do best. They got into combat and mm. kicked ass. Mm -hmm. in the name of the emperor yeah um and the orcs just couldn't put up a fight so uh, it's back to the drawing board and back to a new list for the orcs and hopefully you might see that soon will they do any better maybe um so thanks for watching guys please leave us a comment uh, be interested to hear your suggestions on an orc list i have 
Uh, quite a big-ish Orc army, and it'd be nice to see uh, some of your guys' suggestions out there what to run. Um, I don't really want to paint up another 40-odd boys, if I'm quite honest. Um, so I've got three squads, all with 12 in, which I know is not enough. Um, and I should add to them, I just can't be bothered to sit there painting about 60, 70 Orc boys. Um, so yeah, please leave us a comment, it'd be great to hear your feedback. Uh, Maelstrom, what do you think? Have you played many games of Maelstrom? How are you finding the new Tactical Objective deck? Um, subscribe if you haven't done so already don't for click don't forget to click that little notification icon so you never miss any of our content and as always we'll see you on the next one